Hello, fellow makers. I'm really excited to get to talk with you about one of my makes for the Tim Holtz Ideology 2022 release. And this was the second piece that was used in the live reveal. And I just, the minute I saw the Halloween layers and I saw these curtains and this, the, there were two of them that would work together. I just was absolutely positive I needed to use them. And I loved this postcard, you know, kind of scene that was also in with the layers. And I thought I have to use that. As well as one of my favorite things from this release are these cemetery art and symbolism remnant rubs. Love them so much. They might be going down as maybe one of my all-time favorite remnant rubs of all. I absolutely love them. So I videotaped myself as I made this and you're going to see when I start out that I this actually began as something completely different. I had kind of a whole different idea and then part way through I got started and realized that it just wasn't working and I needed to switch things up and so I ended up with uh, this shrine as my base. So I did a pretty good job videotaping how I made all the different parts as I went through this make. So let's get started with how I made it and what I what you know you need if you want to replicate it or if you even want to just make uh, a few parts. I will talk through all the things that I used. I'll show you how I made it and then the, at the end we'll come back and I'll talk to you about some of the little details that I really love. For this project, the base piece is going to be the large vignette tray. And so it comes in a pack of two. You have the smaller tray and then you have the large tray. And so you'll just need to open it up. We're going to use the large one. Then I'm going to use some of the crepe paper. And I love this. And I think I'm going to make a um, I'm going to make a wreath out of this. So you just kind of crumple it all up and then it's just nice and fluffy like that. And I'm going to make a wreath out of it. The other thing for my wreath is that I am probably going to use a bunch of the bats. There are a whole bunch of bats. And so I'm feeling like I'm going to use a bunch of bats in the wreath. And those are from the new Halloween snippets. So if you have that, there are a ton more bats in here. Um, I just pulled out three really quick. So you're gonna need bats. And I'm going to be using one of the urns. I'm going to be using one of the uh, tombstones and with that I will be using one of the remnant rubs on there. I love the remnant rubs for this season because they are based on just old cemetery art and symbolism and if you've ever gone through any of the old cemeteries well for me it's back east but like in Massachusetts and Philadelphia and things like that the really old ones have symbolism on them which I have found just fascinating as I have studied it and one of the ones that you'll see a lot in the cemeteries in Boston is the skull with the wings and that was from the Puritans and it was put many times skulls were put onto the uh, tombstones to remind people of their mortality. And so if you followed me for very long, you know that uh, oftentimes I will do usually something grief or graveyard related when I'm doing my Halloween things because I consider it my month of mortality. And uh, much like the Puritans, I use that month to just remind myself that you know, we are all going to die at some point and to remember uh, that and have it affect the way that I live today. So if that makes any sense. Anyway, so when I saw all of the graveyard symbolism, 
um, from those amazing graveyards that I have uh, visited, I was so really, really excited about it. And then, of course, there are the fun um, Disney-inspired uh, silly names down at the bottom with dates added. And so, um, anyway, I'm really excited about this. So I will be putting one on here. All right, what is next? Let's see. You are going to need two paper dolls. And I am absolutely 100% using this one. I have not decided on the female yet. So uh, probably one of these three. I haven't used any of these three yet. And so I, I'll see once I get it put together. I am using this window from the Window Frames Baseboards. Last year for my graveyard, I used this one with the six windows and I turned it into a uh, mausoleum. And this year I'm making a different kind of mausoleum with this window and with this baseboard from the Halloween baseboards. So I'm gonna be using these together to make a different mausoleum this year. Then I'm also, I will be splitting this up into two sections. So there will be two sections. And one of the section is using these amazing layers. I love this scene. And so this is going to be a scene on one side and it's going to have these across it. So I just think that's really cool. And then on the other side, I will have the mausoleum area um, in the other side. I am going to be using some uh, backdrops probably. So I always like to have them out because I am most likely going to be using these. And let's see, so that was, I have snippets, I have remnant rubs, I have baseboards, I have Halloween paper dolls, and can I just say, I have got to use this man with his cat, and I haven't figured out how I'm going to use him, but I have to use the man with the cat, I just do. So I hope, I hope inspiration strikes at some point very quickly. Um, the other thing, let's see. Oh, this is the layers. And so that's where I got the, these pieces from the Halloween layers for this year. And then the baseboard window frames. Now I have a couple of other little things out here. I have two drippy candles and I am going to, I made a, a little thing last year where I used the silverware and the spoons from the silverware, and I bent them to make candle holders for my drippy candles. And so I am going to be doing that again this year, but I think to decorate them this year, when I bend this up to go on the wall, I'm going to put the spider on there, is I think what I'm gonna do there. Okay, so it'll be kind of like a, a spider candelabra. This is going to go in the mausoleum section on the walls there. I'm also going to need the new amazing giant tub of Crypt Grit Paste. So excited about this because I went through multiples last year of those little ones. I just used them up like crazy. So I'm so, so, so excited about this giant tub of Crypt Grit Paste. This I will be using along with probably a brick or cobblestone stencil from Stampers Anonymous. And uh, I will be using that to make kind of um, like a, a walkway and then also some walls. That's all I could think of when I was pulling things together uh, to, to do this make. And uh, we'll see how it goes, you know. I always change things up as we get going. So let's get started. I don't want to waste any more time because I'm, I'm super excited about making this one this year. All right, here we go. I'm inviting you to come along with me. I already have a change that I'm going to need to make. So I got this far and got it separated, but I'm, I'm just not happy with this. Um, it's not working for me the just the way it feels so I am considering uh, using the large vignette tray on a different project taking everything off 
So these are just sitting in there to kind of be new walls and support for those. So I'll take that out. That's just chipboard that I've put together. And what I think I'm going to do, so I have made my sconces. So you can see that I bent the spoons. And so it will attach to the wall here and here. And then I put the little spiders on there already and it is ready to put the drippy candle on and then I will probably hot glue gun it and put some drips coming off of it as well on both of those so those are made and then for the the other side I, I'm working on a mausoleum and so I took this piece and you can kind of tell if you look that I I used my craft knife my Tim Holtz craft knife and I cut through it's pretty sharp little exacto type knife and so I cut through around the inside opening and then I sanded it down and I cut around some of these flowers a little bit more this one was already sticking out so I just cut around them a little bit more sanded it down. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be stone and I am going to cover the edges a little bit on both sides with some of the distressed grit paste. And then I took this window and what I wanted to see was I wanted to see a reveal all the way around. And so if you look carefully, you can see that there's a reveal all the way around of some brown from that window. I did. I got my grit paste ready for uh, the ground and some of the walls and things like that. But then that's when I changed my mind. So I think, and again, I may change my mind again, but I think I'm gonna go with a shrine instead. And I will put these on the front here. And then I'm gonna build this part up to look like the top of a mausoleum just with chipboard. I'm going to use this corner piece and put that in there from the Adornments Flourish. So I think I want that there to take up most of the space. And I will probably add some of the grip, uh, Crypt Grip Paste on there and also paint it just so that it looks like stone instead of metal. Then I can put the background in and put my person and some things like that. So she may end up actually being out here instead of in the back and I'll have the grave, the tomb and the urn and things like that. And then on the back is where, and then I'll have the crypt out there for the outdoor mausoleum. I'll have my gentleman and I'll have the wreath uh, down here. And then these can either go still on both sides of this, which I probably will do, or I might even do them on the sides over here because that might be kind of cool just to add some interest on the sides. I never put anything on these sides, so it, and it might kind of tie it together too. Either way, uh, that's... I'm going a different direction, so I just thought I'd put that out there and let you know, because that's how, that's how creating goes. So let's start in our new direction now. Makers, I am so sorry. I was so excited about the new direction that this project was taking that I actually forgot to put my phone back in the camera mount, and I was really into the make and so the next few sections are kind of weird because I'm actually holding the phone while I'm talking through my make because I was just into it and I wasn't putting the phone back in the phone mount for I don't know what reason anyway so I apologized for the weird angle and uh, the weird audio in the next few sections but I hope that they're helpful so I left them in in order to get this to fit on the shrine you need to trim off part of each one. And so this part is trimmed off of this one underneath. So I trimmed it off, but I left a little bit because I'm going to put this one over. 
And then this one I trimmed off a little bit more. And I tried to go where the fold was so that when I put them together, they'll fit right along the side. I have a little bit where it goes over each other so that I can ink that up just the tiniest bit and it'll kind of look like it matches up there in the center. Then with the leftover bits down here, I can trim it so that it kind of looks like the bottom. So if I did it that way, kind of, it looks like an extension and then I cut this off. I'm just going to use this part down here and it will kind of look like an extension of that so that it goes all the way to the bottom. See like that. And then I'll cut off along the side and the same thing over here. I will trim it so that it has just that little bit at the bottom. And then that way it's tall enough so that I can fit my person in there and the rest of the stuff. And then I have enough space for kind of the top of the mausoleum up here. At this point I've built up, I, I just used the cardboard or uh, chipboard stacks that I had in the previous long vignette tray and I trimmed them up with uh, my scissors and my um, X-Acto knife uh, trimmer from Tim and Tonic. And so I uh, made sure that this one fit across just about at the joint. And then I trimmed the edges down on this one so it would fit across and then so that it wouldn't fall in. Uh, the little bits of leftovers I just kind of stuck in here and there. In fact, you can still see it if I pull this up. Just so it gave it a little bit of, you know, strength. And so this is almost even here with this. And so I can now um, put probably just a little bit more of this up here in the the top and so it will be flush all along here and then I can start building up the chipboard pieces that will go on here and that will kind of graduate out to kind of look like um, I don't know molding or something and then I will put grit paste over this to make it look like stone and uh, I got these so that they fit on the side now with that little bit of trim at the bottom to catch you up i put the stenciled grit paste floor or sidewalk in the bottom i have the marbled paper on the sides i went ahead and put this layers piece in the back and I trimmed it up so it would fit against the chipboard at the top I put another piece of that brickwork and now I am ready to adhere these pieces so that once they're in I can then go ahead and start putting in I have trimmed these so that they go with the angle at the top and I'll be putting in 3 eighths, 7 inch pieces across the top and then across here, just over the edge. And so I just want to be sure that I have the sizing right. So I'm going to go ahead and put these down first and make sure that they are in place before I move on to making the top of the mausoleum. I have this painted with the old paper paint and then distress paint but I wanted to put I decided I wanted the urns to be on the outside edge because I want to put the candle holders on each side but that you know there's no place to put these and really attach them I mean I could attach them kind of but they're just sitting out there they need to be grounded so I took four layers of chipboard that I had, I cut it uh, two and a half by seven. 
And so it's longer than it is wide because I wanted to have the same reveal on the front and the back sides. So I have that little bit of reveal. And then I wanted it longer on the ends for me to be able to attach my urns. There we go. And then I can add these and it will just kind of extend the whole vignette out a little bit and give it some interest on the sides. All right, time to get caught up. I have the sides drying where I put the grit paste through the stencil. And then I need to, uh, once it's dry enough, I'll go ahead and do the rest of it. I put grit paste on the front here. And then the metal thing that I was going to put in it is just much too big. It doesn't fit the, the flourish adornment. So I am probably going to use the urn and then this ferned thing up here, uh, most likely. We'll see uh, once I start cutting them which ones fit the best. And then I'll put a little more grit paste around it in here before I add some distressed crayon. As you remember, the spoons. And then I put the drippy candle and I had put the spider adornment on there. And so I just hot glued it to the spoon. And uh, as it dripped down, I, so I put a bunch on there. I pushed this in and let it kind of drip naturally. And then I added some more with my glue gun and I would blow on it and let it dry. And so now I'm gonna go in with a detail brush and I am going to paint it with the old paper paint. And then I will distress it with a little bit of hickory smoke and uh, ground espresso uh, crayon so that it matches the drippy candle. So I have two of those that are almost ready. I just have to do the painting and the distressing down there. Uh, the base, I painted the chipboard uh, and it looks pretty much the same thickness and everything like that. I attached it and then I went over it with grit paste all in the crevices and on the ends. And I also added a little bit to the front of this lip because it will be going on here. And so I did want it to kind of look uh, similar. So that is drying. And then for the back, I it was going to have this. And so if you'll remember, this was a dark brown window from the baseboard layers. So I just put on a piece of uh, chipboard that I painted with the old paper. I put a little bit of grit paste on it to start off with and then painted over it. And then this will go over it like this, but I need to distress it before so it it matches this a little bit more before I adhere these. So I'm gonna add some uh, probably Distress Crayon and these I'm also adding the rub-ons before I attach this up to go onto the back here. Okay, so a few more steps to go on all of these, but I'm just working through it and then I put some Distress Crayon on these and a little bit of grit paste on them to get them to kind of match the same color scheme that we have going on, which is kind of a brownish gray. So that's where we're at. Moving on. Well, my friends, I am at a point of stopping tonight or actually uh, this morning. It's about two o'clock in the morning. Are you a late night crafter like I am? Late night, early morning crafter. And I have a long day at work today. Um, so I'm going to stop here, but I did get the side finished, each side finished. And after I stenciled, I just took my palette knife and I just kind of built some up along to, I, I'm going to kind of maybe make it look like moss or a vine growing or something like that along each side. And kind of the same thing up here. I want it to be like you know, moss is growing on it. Um, here is the crypt that will go on the back. So I still have to um, do the distress crayon on it, 
but I needed to let all of the grit paste dry and you can see I used a ton of grit paste. I've probably used at least half of the giant tub already. Um, I love this stuff so much. These dried and I went over them with some brown Distress Crayon and then some green uh, peeled paint Distress Crayon so that it looks like they've been out in the elements for a while and are a little bit mossy. And the one uh, Tombstone, I put the rub-ons on it and then I went ahead and put more grit paste over it and used the brown and peeled paint distress crayon on that one. And then I have put two coats of the uh, old paper on and if you look you can see that I even painted underneath so you want to get the glue painted all the way around. After work, I will uh, finish the back of this. I will make one of these on the back of this after all of this has dried, paint it, get the paper on the back, and get it ready to attach this. And then I also want to put the plants in here. And you know I always use these brooms. I love these brooms for uh, cemetery plants. So I'm good. I need to get these trimmed and ready to glue gun into these and then I'll add some probably uh, some of the bouquet maybe uh, and then I save these amazing stems because they are such cool sticks or twigs that can be used in other projects so never throw these away for me I feel like I have two products in one um, with the broomsticks because I've got my dead plants and then I've got these awesome twigs. So don't throw these away. So tomorrow, that's where we're headed. So I'll see you then. Makers, I got so involved with this make that I forgot to continue to videotape myself as I put the finishing touches on it. So here are a couple photos that I thought I'd talk through with you. This one and this next one are of the base of the shrine before I put the paper doll in and I thought I'd just show you that I added some moss and things in the corners just to cover up you know any little areas that I didn't want seen and then I added some moss to the front with one of the bouquet flowers. In order to get the paper doll to stand up on her own, 
I folded a piece of chipboard into a triangle and attached it to the base of the paper doll. Then I put some glue on the bottom of that triangle and adhered her into place where I wanted her so that I didn't have to adhere her to the back of the wall or to the curtain. She could stand alone. The roof of the mausoleum is made with a piece of backdrop paper. There's a little bit of grit paste colored with some distress crayon in peeled paint and then I added a little bit of actual moss from the hobby store. At the top on the side you can see where I made a little bit of a vine out of crypt grit paste and I colored it green with distress crayon in peeled paint. I attached that sconce that I made from the adornments spoon and then you can see here at the bottom that I did color it with the distress crayons to make it look like the rest of the candle. If you look carefully at the sconce portion, you can see that I covered the spider and the spoon with a layer of black distress paint and then wiped some of it away on the high areas. I then added some distress crypt paste and covered it with a little bit of rusty hinge distress crayon to make it look like the sconce was rusted. The urns were attached to each side of the base piece with distress collage medium. Then I went around the base of each urn with some distress crypt paste and colored that crypt paste with various browns and peeled paint distress crayons to make it all look like it was one cohesive piece. I attached the mausoleum to the back of the shrine with distress collage medium and then once that was completely dry I took my palette knife and I spread some distress crypt paste all around the outside of that frame so it looked like it was attached to the back and was a solid piece of concrete coming out of the back of the shrine. Then once that was dry, I added a little bit more to make it look like some vines were growing on it, just like on the sides and the top of the shrine, and add a little bit more of the moss from the hobby store so that the theme and the style carried through from front to side to back. Well, I hope you found some of that helpful. This, as you've already seen, is the end result of all of that work. And I'm really so happy with the way that the shrine turned out and I love just all of the, you know, different layers with, this is just, you know, as you saw, just chipboard and paint, some of that grit paste that I adore, the Crypt Grit Paste. I pretty much used this entire jar on two projects, uh, which is, is pretty amazing. And the majority of it went on this one. It's so worth it, so completely worth it. All right, so you, you can see that I used those remnant rubs up here, grit paste, and a little bit of actual moss from the hobby stores up there as well. And then I trimmed those curtains. Um, so I trimmed out the center part and just kind of laid them over and you can hardly even tell that they were pieced together. I used the entire piece in the background. I did not color any of this. And the reason I didn't color any of these is because I kind of wanted it to feel a little bit um, like the crypts and the mausoleums and the things like that when you, you go to these old, old places. And so I just wanted it to feel just ancient and, and old. So that's why I, I just decided I didn't, I didn't want to introduce color. Um, per se. I know there's a little color with the green and there's a little color with the dead plants, but I, I that that was enough. All right, so I added my lady here. Now I had to trim her skirt to get her head below the curtains. So don't be afraid, you know, to get in there if you need to trim up their skirts or, you know, kind of make them so that they fit the scene well. And the, if you look, you can see I have uh, the remnant rubs also on here and a lot of moss from the grit paste and the distress crayons on the tombstone. And so I felt like this really looked like something I would find in like a Boston um, graveyard or something like that if I was on, on a tour there. Now, both sides are pretty much the same. And I used the grit paste, 
the Crypt Grip Paste through stencil, and it can be a brick stencil, or there's another one that uh, looks like this that's actually kind of cobblestone or slate. Um, then I took my palette knife and I just kind of uh, piled some on it and I just went through and made these so that they would look kind of like vines or you know moss growing even more and then on the top this is a, a backdrop that to me looked like an old kind of falling apart mausoleum roof with moss already growing on it and so I just added some more real moss from the hobby store mixed in with my grit paste moss. I made this out of the adornment. So this is a spoon and a drippy candle. And then I just painted some of the glue. So I put it on the spoon with a glue gun and then I just painted it and then antiqued it with a distress crayon, just like I would if I was making the the candle, but I didn't have to go to all that trouble. I added a spider to the spoon to make it a little bit spooky. And I just glued him on with Distress Collage Medium and left him to dry overnight. And then I added a little grip paste and a little Distress Crayon. And then I attached this with Distress uh, Collage Medium and let it dry for a couple of hours before I moved on. So this one takes just takes a lot of drying time because you're waiting for the grip paste to dry. And I had to wait for the, I had to do part of this and then the stencil wasn't long enough. So I had to let it dry and then I had to, you know, kind of line it up again and then do the top part of it and let it dry. And then I had to, you know, put this on and then let it dry. And then, so there are steps. And so this doesn't go really fast, but all the waiting is really, really worth it in my opinion. Now on the back, oh, I forgot to talk about the uh, the urns. So these are the urns, which I love, and they come in this really great gray color this year. And so I just add a little bit of grip paste and some distressed crayon to them. This is just one of the brooms. And I showed you how I just pull the sticks out of the brooms and save them for another project. In fact, I have them both still here um, that I can use for another project if I want. It's, they're so great. And then I just you know, stick these in with hot glue and then kind of give them a little haircut with my scissors and stick in a few flowers from Bouquet so that it looks like kind of an old dead cemetery plant. And that's one of my favorite Halloween little things that I do. It's almost like every year I have my dead plant in an urn. It's just something I, I, I do. It's one of my signatures. All right. On the back, I also really loved this baseboard and I really wanted to use it to um, kind of be part of my mausoleum another mausoleum side and last year I did the small windows with the six little windows and I did something similar but this year I wanted these to be a much bigger statement so this again is a baseboard window and it has these two and it was just barely bigger than the opening and I really wanted much more of a reveal so that it could feel like it was really layered in there and so I used a my craft knife and carefully cut as I said in the explanations around and then I could have that great reveal and that all that look at all this grit paste I used all the way around so that it looks like it is just been cemented in there for ages and ages I love the crypt grit paste. You hardly have to do anything to it. It really does all the work on its own. More grit paste up here. I did the same treatment on the back with just layering uh, strips of the uh, chipboard. More of those amazing remnant rubs. And then again on here, more amazing remnant rubs uh, in layers. There's several of them. And then I added my paper doll, who uh, this gentleman has come to pay his respects to a family member, uh, probably long gone. And then on the other side is another 
Same thing, I have a sconce, drippy candle, did the same thing on the roof that I did on the other side. I have another dead plant in an urn. And the last thing is, and I showed this when I was making it, that I needed a bigger base for the shrine than comes with it. It comes with these two bases, but it wasn't big enough for me to be able to fit two urns and two sconces, but it just felt weird and it felt like it needed grounded more. So this is two layers of chipboard that I put together. Depending on how thick your chipboard is, you may have to use two or three layers. And I just put collage medium on them. I just glued them together and then you can sit on them. You can put books on them, whatever, to keep it nice and flat until they dry. Then I sanded the edge to try and make it look like it was one piece painted everything with old paper and then um, added that grit paste and you can hardly even tell. So I just love how it gets built up and it really kind of gives it the grounding that it needed. So this is again going down as I, I, I just love both of the makes uh, that were in the live. They they're just completely my style of Halloween stuff and I really, really just adore it. And I do want to give a shout out to my friend, Kim. She went to Savannah, Georgia and went on a tour of a, an old cemetery, a historic cemetery there. And she had sent me a link to show me where she was going. And when I saw a tomb and it was really just this part. And uh, I thought, Oh, that is really, really cool. I want that shape. I really want that shape. And so once I decided that the tray wasn't going to work, I thought back to that picture that I saw uh, that she and her husband sent of that tombstone. And I thought, I'm, I have to do it. And so I did. And I am just so, so happy with it. So thank you, Kim, for that bit of inspiration uh, that made this piece just exactly what I wanted. And thank you for sticking with me for this very long tutorial. If I didn't cover anything or you want something clarified, as always, please contact me through a blog at placewellwithpaper.blogspot.com. There's a link in the description to this video as well. And I'll be glad to answer your questions to the very best of my ability. And I hope that you have a very crafty day, my friends. <music>